Okay, now we move on to the next session. My name is Peter Buxton. I'm also partner of uh, Local Search today. Our next session is, is entitled The New Wave Supporting Cross Media. And we have uh, with us speakers from two very different uh, angles looking at this uh, question of uh, supporting cross media. In fact, one area is going to be looking at what was traditionally called DA, directory assistance, telephone inquiries, voice, and the other area is going to be looking at, uh, at sales. Klaus Harisch entered the voice sector first in 1994. He founded in 1997 the company Telegate, which became the largest private uh, DA provider, uh, reaching revenues up to 170 million euro. Uh, he later founded Go Yellow, and in May 2015, Klaus Harisch started his current uh, concept, ummday.com, which he's going to describe to us today. Klaus Harisch is a true veteran, he's a pioneer, and he's a visionary of the voice sector. We're delighted that he joins us. Please give, us him, give him a very warm welcome. Thanks a lot, uh, Peter, and uh, thanks a lot for having a chance to speak here. Uh, Peter asked me to make it quick and dirty, so I'm going to try this. Uh, even our business model and the service we have invented just three months ago is quite new. Uh, before that, we have uh, research and development, uh, mostly uh, software guys working on the platform for 12 months, but it's now on air. And uh, well, but now let me start how we came to the idea and uh, what is the problem behind and what has the problem to do with you. The real thing for me was when I worked in the other companies and when I looked on the SMEs, I asked myself, what's about the situation that SMEs do not have access to classical contact center services like telesales, like customer support and so on. Normally every big industry group, whether it's a car company, a TV company, or whatever, they do ho have call centers in the background working for them, doing a lot of stuff for them. And looking a little bit more closer, you can take the dentist who has the problem from six to nine. My wife is dentist and she says six to nine calls, they are really shitty because I come to the, to the, to the practice and I first have to listen to the uh, uh, to the, to the uh, answering machine to get all the calls from six to nine, what they call emergency calls. Or if I have a bicycle shop, I want to get uh, to sell off my bicycles I have uh, still in my garage, so I want to book a telesales campaign. I want to have one agent to call my top 100 uh, customers to sell my bicycle off, or whatever. So just to get this kind of service, what every big company do have down to the SMEs. And the second question I try to answer today is whether the solution is going to disrupt the call center business, uh, the call center industry, and my answer is uh, probably yes. Okay, so now we have to change the technique shortly before, so we can switch now. Oh, my, my, mine doesn't work. I get a red light, but this one works okay. Sorry. Oh, now it's not. Sorry, sorry. Okay. So, several mega trends in the voice industry. Uh, just by accident, this newspaper is from yesterday from Munich. There's on it. Uh, Never, you never go back in the office again, you can work from home. So there are political changes going on in, in Germany that uh, everybody can work from his home office. Uh, this is something very interesting because current megatrends coming like most times from the US are home shoring, self outsourcing. Home shoring means that you bring the people not uh, to India to make call center services, but that American people are making call center services or German people for Germans. Self outsourcing, flexible working hours, working from home, multi channel approach, web chat, WhatsApp, email, video chat, and so on. Uh, you know about that. 
the classical problem is that brick and mortar call centers can hardly meet these new demands due to a lack of flexibility. They do have high fixed costs, they have uh, infrastructure, and they are quite unflexible in uh, uh, getting deeper into those or solving those problems uh, uh, which are there on the market. And so the voice services as we have them nowadays are still locked in a service cost trap. So a new business model is necessary. Uh, uh, I have to say that I worked on this with my two eldest sons. The one is uh, 24, the other 26, so they are real online natives. Uh, one of them is, has studied uh, informatic, I think it's uh, software development. Uh, and, and so we looked on that, whether there is a chance to technologically solve this problem we have seen in the industry and to bring the services down to each and everybody. And finally we said, okay, uh, let's use globalization and let's use what's technologically possible and let's try to put something together. And uh, mm. what came out is something like this. You see, as it is of today, uh, call centers, you have to, to, uh, to, to lower the space, you have to put people in as much as you can in, in order to get the costs down. Um, you normally then make offshoring. So in France, in Paris, people are working in Marrakesh for the, for the, uh, for the customers in, in uh, Paris and so on. And how we see the future is, as you see it uh, tomorrow, as simple as that. People are sitting somewhere in the world, somewhere in some offices, and just taking calls or doing calls for customers. Uh, this is very quick. Sorry. Yeah. OK. What's behind it? I think uh, the whole story started already with eBay, because eBay was the first who addressed the issue that private people want to leverage their personal assets. They have something. For example, eBay started, they had something to sell. I have something privately to sell, so what can I do? I sell this via platform. Then you was disrupting taxi business via I have a car to make money. So you have a license, you have a driver license, you have a car, so why don't you drive for us? We make for you the billing and all the, the, the marketing. We have the platform. You get the money from us. So Uber is a classical online marketplace as it is eBay. Airbnb is another example disrupting the travel business. I have an apartment to make money. So how can I get the apartment on the market? I need a platform. I need an online marketplace. I put my flat on it as a private person on the one hand side. And on the other hand side, there is somebody who is interested in the flat. And Hyundai practically is doing the same uh, with, in, in the area of the contact center industry, and this means simply I have a laptop to make money. Because each and everybody no, can uh, provide something to some services, and this is what finally <coughs> is happening right now. What is Hyundai? Uh, Hyundai is an acronym for you made my day, what both customers and providers should say when using the service. So both should say, after they have met on the marketplace, okay, I was happy with my agent, and the agent should, should say, okay, I was happy with my customer. Hyundai is a unique online marketplace, at least right now, that turns anyone with a laptop into an online service provider, not a home worker provider. This is quite different because home workers are quite normal in the US, like uh, the company Arise or so, but it's quite diff different when you have home workers, <coughs> within a call center infrastructure or a marketplace where you have rankings and ratings and it's much different in the handling and you can directly access your agents and not uh, through a call center provider. Hyundai is targeting millions of companies needing contact center services uh, related to experience provided uh, agents and customers include practically everybody. So we have started with very small customers but we are now up to big companies like uh, rental car companies or companies who are manufacturing tires or whatever. They all also figured out and find out that uh, such a platform is much more flexible. I can book one agent or I can book 100 agents. <coughs> so Hyundai is a value-added broker that provides the functions of billing, quality control, marketing, and technical operations. We are not a classical call center or provider, we provide those functions 
And on the one hand side, there are the, the <coughs> business customers, and on the other side, the agents as the providers. And they all meet on the platform, define their prices, make their contracts, <coughs> like Uber or Airbnb. Yumday charges commission of 21% on each contract. And to corporate customers, we figured this out the last three months, there are corporate customers out, they pay additional service fee, so we configure their virtual call <coughs> center on our marketplace. And I'm also quite open with the figures. We started, as I said, in July. So we started there with a revenue of 100 euros, then it was 1,000 euros, now it's 10,000 euros, and we hope that we are very soon on a six digit, but it's really going like that. So I can say the model as such is really working. Sorry, let's start with two. <coughs> So I skipped the live demo, sorry for that, but it's simply because we are in a, in a hurry. Everybody can look on it and get his own uh, picture on it as it works. It's right now only and still in German language. We are hardly working to get it uh, to the US because in the US there is the biggest market for such kind of services. Just that you get a feeling in Germany we have a market of currently in this call center area of 12 billion euros. It's a world market of 300 billion euros. Uh, the total advertisement market worldwide is about 450 millions. And that's why we are really pushing ahead to get in the US, because there, at least what we experienced, uh, uh, the, the, the customers are much more flexible and open to try the new services. And we saw when it works in Germany, it, it should or it must even much better work in the US. So uh, short conclusions, new business model based on new technology. We offer an online marketplace instead of brick and mortar call center. We, uh, coming to quality and so on, just that you have it in mind, shared virtual and augmented reality instead of real pieces in the call center that you normally had. So for example, if you sell bicycles or if you sell telephones or whatever, you have the telephones there. If you do customer support for Hewlett Packard, there was a Hewlett Packard printer standing in the midst of the call center so the agents can discuss about it and so on. This is all doable now online. The technology is there and, and uh, we can show that. Video conferencing, webinars instead of face-to-face -face teaching and also uh, our issues. And that finally leads to democratizing the access to call center-based services and broadening the business opportunities to SMEs so they can also say, I need an agent for customer support, I need an agent for telesales, I need an agent for whatever. They book him for one day, for two days, for three hours, they pay and that's it. And the classical call center landscape is going to change dramatically the next five years. I'm quite convinced. I think others uh, will come up that are doing the the, the, something similar than we. I hope that we have a certain time advantage. And what we learned also is automated voice is not a real option because the customer represents a value and he, he, he wants to be respected as such. So whatever kind of modern answering machines are not the answer on the call center industry because uh, the, the value of the customer disappears if you talk always to the machine. And what I'm saying also is that if at some day the technology will be on a level that you don't need any more agents, then probably we will be the first who can pay for it and use it for our platform like Uber is not uh, in danger because of automated cars. Google said we invested in Uber because if automated cars are going to come, Uber will be the first who is going to use them. So technology is not a danger for those kind of marketplaces. In fact, the marketplaces will be the first who are going to use the modern technology. And a final remark, which is not there, but this is more uh, to all of us. I would have also an eye on augmented and virtual reality because I spoke not long ago to the, to the founder of Pokemon Go, and when I spoke to the founder of Pokemon Go, I got the impression that this had something to do with local search. This is just a hint for the next conference, probably. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Klaus.
So our next speaker is Jesse Katz. He's Vice President of Sales of the SMB division at Yext since 2013. He leads and operates a, a direct sales team uh, in the United States, overseeing over 70 employees, inside sales, training, and account management. We're delighted to welcome, please, Jesse Katz. Thank you so much. All right, so uh, we're actually gonna pivot a little bit, and instead of uh, talking about disrupting the inside center market, we're actually gonna talk about perfecting it um, and how Yex has built a best-in-class sales machine. Um, before we get into kind of the nitty gritty, I do want to thank um, Kimberly, Cinda, for the opportunity, and on behalf of Yex, for me to have the opportunity to speak to our partners, um, our prospective partners, and industry leaders across the board. It's truly an honor and a privilege here today. So before we actually unveil the curtain of Yex and the inside sales machine that we've actually built, let's go through a couple very simple numbers. So the SMB division was actually founded in 2011. When Yex pivoted the company, myself and two other employees uh, launched the SMB division as a go-to-market for power listings. Currently, we are now 75 employees with an SMB alone and 670 for Yex Incorporated. <clears throat> over the course of time, we've actually acquired and retained over 43,000 individual SMBs, and this all adds up to a $20 million business within the SMB division alone. So how did we build this? And how did we actually create the direct sales machine? First and foremost, we are in perfect SMB harmony with our marketing team and the inside sales floor. This allows for every single dollar spent in all of our marketing activity to drive consumers, to drive prospective clients directly to scan their business for free and see how they actually appear across the local ecosystem. This is for two reasons. A, to drive e-commerce purchases, to see how they appear across the web and provide and actually purchase the solution that is powerless. It also creates 100% inbound leads for the SMB sales floor themselves. So, we drive an unbelievable amount of traffic to the scan. We've diversified our investment in these channels through a variety of media. So, oops, whoa. And that was weird. Okay, this is not going back. All right, so I missed like three slides. Can you shoot back, Manchez? Yeah, here we go. Okay, and back. So we got some fun graphics that are going to about to pop up. So we drive a variety of scans across the board through email, page search, through banner ads, LinkedIn display, direct media across the board, all to get a prospective client to place their business name and phone number in and scan their business. And we do this exceptionally well. We have invested more in media over the years and optimized our landing page to drive a prospective client exactly how we want to do it. And as you see this graph right here, in the last five years, we have, we have uh, driven our scans exponentially over time. And what this allows for is currently to generate over 40,000 unique inbound leads per month. And this is all driven from the scan alone. And these aren't just simple leads. This isn't a random name, address, and phone number, or a cold call or an outbound prospect call. These are highly monetized and highly efficient leads to give the individual sales associate the opportunity and the best opportunity to actually close each one of these SMBs. And we score these two ways, okay? First, by priority. This is an input of, on a scale of zero to six. There are 14 separate inputs that an actual client can do through that scan that is actually going to score that lead. We then have a secondary score as well, scoring from range from zero to 50, and this has 26 separate inputs. Very simply, every action that a client takes place that on that scan itself will generate a score and a priority to give the, the sales associate the best opportunity and the most information to close that sale. So, what creates the score? First and foremost, we scan the business. So a local listing comes across one of our many landing pages, they place their information in, and they see this business listing scan. They see how they actually appear across Google, Yahoo, Yelp, our entire power listings network. Then they have the ability to obviously continue. Each one of these actions has been highly, highly, highly optimized 
to drive two things. Drive someone deeper and deeper through the funnel and then also to create and exemplify exactly what we want from a lead itself. Once they click continue, they have the ability to build out their listing. This is too prompt. First of all, we're connecting and grabbing more pertinent information for the sales associate itself, the email address, the business owner phone name, phone name, for business owner name and all the information so we can get directly to a decision maker on the phone. But this also invests the client in actually time and effort of building out their listing, writing in a full description, a featured message. All of these things allow someone to be incorporated to go th further and further through the funnel. Finally, they actually have the ability to select their plan from our lowest emerging package up to our premium. And this is an optimized, highly optimized page to drive people to that complete package. As you can see, each one of these packages have a specific priority based upon it as well. And lastly, they go to the checkout page. Now, assuming that at any point in time, any one of these clients fall off the flow, they're in a 10 minute delay perfectly synced up a lead will populate through our in-house built CRM directly to a sales associate. Every bit of pertinent information that the sales associate is going to need to acquire that new business is right there on the lead. The name, address, and phone number of the business, the listings report itself, a session report that says what media flow they actually came through, and most importantly, the score and priority. And we distribute these score and priorities very uh, effect effectively and efficiently across the entire sales associate and the, the inside sales floor. So basically the from zeros to threes are automatically distributed and then we want to get the best leads to our best performing hands. So how do we actually make sure that as we've driven all of these scans, as we've driven all of these unique leads, that they're closed in the best opportunity in place? So we have a highly efficient and metrics based direct sales organization and operation. Look, it's me, very excited. So, Je that's me, Jesse Katz, um, and this is the actual organization itself. So we have three sales managers currently, each with around 14 to 50, 15 individual YSAs. We have a training department because we're always cultivating talent, and that's where it really starts. Our training department is one of the best in class. We have designed to recruit and hire talent and cultivate them to create them into the best and most efficient power listing sellers. The training program itself lasts two, three months, um, upwards of three months, and to graduate the program, they need to actually make 40 sales in 40 days. This is highly, highly interactive. Our trainers are working full time and being onboarded by, uh, our, I'm sorry, the trainees are actually being onboarded by full time trainers, working with them day in and day out, making sure they understand the full product the local ecosystem, the competitive landscape, how we pitch, how we sell, how we build value across the board, and the best practices that we have refined over the last five years. But most importantly, they're actually taught how to pitch and sell off the most powerful tool in marketing, the scan itself. The power listing scan is the hook, the fear of loss, the desire for gain, and the value proposition that every single small and medium business owner needs and wants. And the scan itself gives the power of, and gives all the information directly to the sales associate so they can pitch accordingly. <clears throat> so the prospect is actually proactively completing this scan, which allows for a very powerful hook. They allow for us to go directly to the decision maker without being closed off by a gatekeeper. They've actually proactively reached out, so we're following up. Most importantly, the scan itself is gonna give every piece of information that the seller needs to cater the pitch specifically to the SMB. From what media channel they actually went through, from the priority and the score, but most importantly, what did the scan actually reveal? They're not found anywhere. They have absolutely no internet presence whatsoever. They've moved their business, their address has changed. They have a name, address, and phone number, but they're not standing out. There's no enhanced content whatsoever. There's a bad address, a bad phone number. There's an incorrect business name, and a Domino's is listed as Ray's Pizza. And then there's the perfect scan. A scan that actually has perfect name, address, and phone number. And then the, business, uh, the actual sales associate can cater their pitch to actually sell enhanced content and media insurance and the value of protecting the information they've worked so hard to actually cultivate. 
So once they actually go through this and they have the scan, they get that decision maker on the phone, they have the ability and are armed with all the tools to go through a three-pronged approach to actually pitch and acquire an SMB directly on the phone. The first and most important feature, and it's a fab type sale, feature, advantage, and benefit. Business owner is gonna ask, what is in it for me? And we're going to deliver that value. So, the first feature is correct and consistent information. Business owner is going to be listed exactly how they want to appear. The proper business name, address of the business, and phone number, basically within 48 to 72 hours across our entire network. So they're actually gonna have the ability to be found by all of their prospective clients. But it's not just enough to be found on these sites. They need a reason for a client to actually choose that. So we're gonna enhance the content with videos, photos, descriptions, bios, driving directions, anything that you actually want, any field that you can think of is actually provided across the board. And we're gonna sync all of that content to give the consumer a reason to actually choose them and have the business stand out from their competition. And finally, the last value proposition is centralized control. The ability to control all of this from one platform. Not 60, 70 different usernames and passwords, but one platform across the board to actually control it all. So, with all of these high quality leads coming through, with highly trained and efficient sales associate, we've actually identified the optimal performance of each sales associate. They know how to pitch, they know how to sell, they know how to close. But now it's time to take all of these assets, all of these unique inbound leads, and the best talent to actually acquire and create a sales funnel and machine. So we've broken it down after years and years where we have a perfect amount of leads to the perfect amount of people at the perfect time. So 35 unique leads per YSA per day. Each sales associate will make over 150 dials and be on the phones for four to four and a half hours. Now, these aren't arbitrary performance metrics. These aren't taken out of a hat or thrown in the air. These are highly optimized so we actually get the correct amount of live owners on the phone with a four to one live owner ratio and a pitch ratio of three to one. All of these will allow for a YSA, YEX sales associate, to actually acquire the correct amount of businesses on a daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly basis. <clears throat> Most importantly, this allows us to maintain our lead close percentages. All of the scoring that we've done gives the ability for the YSA to know which lead to attack and when, from priority zeros all the way up to our highest performing leads who've checked out for that $999 package uh, at, a, at a priority six. Most importantly though, once we get these leads to the fund, we've acquired them, we've trained and invested in our sales associates, it's important that we retain and we motivate this talent. And we do this through a variety of ways, from compensation to creating a fantastic work-life balance. So we have five levels of YSAs within the organization. This actually allows for an entry level associate to graduate training, start at a YSA level one with a $30,000 base salary, and have the ability to move up all the way up to a YSA level three, making a $70,000 base salary and obviously a larger quota. As you can see right here, our quotas will range from 8,550 to 90, just under 20K with expected revenues per month, 14.5, all the way up to $32,000 for our top end sales associates. We offer a uncapped monthly commission structure. Every time, as soon as you hit your quota, 22% over that. And then most importantly, we have a monthly bonus structure. This is built into the monthly comp that is on top of just what you've earned from selling, from maintaining a positive attitude, from basically having an organization and being aligned with the YEX overall goals of YEX and YEX Incorporated. And then to incentivize on top of that with monthly contests, iPads and giveaways, uh, American Express really likes me, I buy a whole lot of gift cards every single month, uh, TVs, prizes, you name it, we're actually acquiring and giving the opportunity for YSAs to earn bonus incentives. And then we wanna retain the talent. So it's not just about giving a spiff or a commission product, to allow for a sales associate to earn more than a living wage, but more earn and really be successful within the organization, but we want to keep them, and we want to keep a top performer working for a long time. So we've implemented a career bonus system. Every time they earn a quarter million dollars in, 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 uh, 
in bookings, they actually receive a flat payment. And I'm about to pay out my first ever million dollar bonus to Mr. Robert Furla, and that'll be $25,000, thankfully, I don't actually have to pay it myself. Um, and then we've, all of this has created a fantastic work-life balance. It's very important that you retain and you motivate your talent without burning out a rep. So with these efficient metrics, with the inbound leads, the perfect amount of leads, the perfect amount of people at the perfect time, we allow for people to live their lives and not have to be in the office till nine o'clock at night or anything like that. We work set hours and are highly efficient while we do it. So with all of this fine tuned performance, with all of our acquisition rates, the 40,000 unique inbound leads coming through, we have a highly, highly, highly predictable and consistent sales machine. About 70%, just under 70% of the revenue brought in is directly through the sales organization. And it's like clockwork. Our annual bookings per sales associate is over $160,000 net average upon all levels. We have daily bookings consistently of $25,000 plus, monthly bookings of, of just over half a million, quarterly of 1.5, and new revenue brought in at $6 million. This is clockwork. This is the efficiency that is created from an inbound funnel to the best talent. And then high, and then actually, <clears throat> and then acquired across the board. So right now we built a twenty million dollar business, and we're growing, and we're continuing. That's my last slide. So uh, welcome, thank you all once again for uh, allowing me the opportunity to speak um, on behalf of Gext. Thank you, and we are done.